Well, what do you feel about watching a video? Mm, okay. All right. Well. I got the handy dandy remote. One, get to it. All right. YouTube, what is going on? Well, I'm not doing any work on the car today. Um, I spent the most part of today, hey, do you like my little, our little drive-in setup? Yeah, we uh, had to get more entertainment up and going for the, uh, for the wife when we're not actually filming. Um, and so, I, you know, I can stream some other YouTube channels while I'm out here working and not filming, you know, supporting all you guys out there that are uh, supporting me. Anyway, um, so here's where we're at. The last week, last weekend, we did the uh, we did the heights front end in a day. Now, let's let's be completely honest. It's not. It wasn't truly a complete heights front end swap in a day. Um, I had a few few things in my favor. This front end was already pre-assembled. It had all the brakes and control arms and all that stuff already installed because it came off of another car. So that saved a whole bunch of time. Um, and we didn't actually put it all the way together as a running driving car because um, we started with a running driving car. Well, sort of. Uh, that's a whole different deal. But we, we did swap the whole front end out. We ditched the... Uh, the factory front clip over there for a Mustang 2 conversion, which was, uh, well, I'm excited to be able to drive this car again because that's going to make this thing drive so much better. But we still have a long ways to go. Um, there's some significant, significant things that we have to address. Uh, well, I guess they're not as significant as that, but uh, I was... Well, let me, let's, let's go ahead and turn it this way so you can see what, what, we're, what we're looking at. So I was real happy with this. Um, despite the fact that we've got some floorboard issues, all of this is actually in really good shape. Um, the, a lot of this red right here that you see, that's not actually rust. This is uh, red dirt off of my road from when I drove it down the, uh, the red dirt road to test the transmission. Um, that'll clean up. We'll... I'll clean that and uh, spray it with some satin black so it matches the rest of the firewall and give it another good coating. Um, but most of the, the factory undercoating is actually still there. That's what all of this, this junk is, this real textured stuff. It's a factory undercoating stuff. So that's all in really good shape on both sides. We don't have any major rust issues in the cowl. It, up in this area, everything looks really good. So we'll have to do that, you know, factory undercoating, chipping off. So we'll have to go through and get rid of a bunch of that, do some touch up, some cleanup. We'll need to drop the front end, the bars back off, do some cleanup up there. Um, that's all just kind of temporarily in, but our, our cowl all looks really good. These pieces look really good. It's not nearly as, uh, there's not any real major rust issues up in the in the important areas now this one's in the light and you can see that a lot of this looks really good you got even down here where these tend to get real rusty is in really good shape looks like we got a little cleanup to do right there and put a little preventative on it but no actual major rust repair which is a huge that's a huge win for a car that i thought was going to have some rust issues based on the condition of the floorboards but um the floor is really all we got to worry about and then uh, I went ahead and pulled the factory harness from the hood side. I just unplugged them right there, got rid of them. These, these are some gauge wires that are going to gauges that are in there under the dash. We'll end up redoing those. But uh, we're gonna, we'll, well, I'm going to do a whole aftermarket um, wiring harness on it and put fresh wiring because, as you may recall, I've been having some wiring issues with this car. Uh, some of which I think I've identified. Oh, I need to get a flashlight. I need to get a flashlight. Some, but yeah, some, some of the, um, 
can't, I don't, I did, I cleaned up, so, ah, oh, there's where I put it. So I don't know where everything was at. You know, that's how it usually goes. You, you know, you do clean up and then you can't find anything. But yeah, so let's, let's take a poke under here on the inside. So you can see this is kind of a, a rat's nest of stuff that needs to be taken care of. But let me see if I can show you. I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and put a marker on the screen, but right there, right up there, I'll put a mark. I'll mark it on the screen so it points out. But right next to that red wire, there's uh, wires twisted together and completely exposed. Um, so I'm sure that's a bad thing. And then that fuse block, that factory fuse block, looks a little, little rough. It's seen better days. Um, but overall, it's really not that bad. Um, and, you know, an aftermarket wiring setup shouldn't be, should fix that right up. Ah, I'm gonna put it back right where it was, top of the toolbox where it goes. You know, that way I can't find it later. Uh, what else we got? Uh, but overall, I mean, doing that setup on the front end, I mean, if you watch that last video where we did that, it really isn't that bad. Especially if you have a car that's in good shape that doesn't have any rod in it. it that's a, it's not a bad job. A couple of people and you can get it done. You know, you can get the front end swapped in a day. And if you're motivated and you've got all the stuff to do it, you could probably go uh, running driving car on Friday to front end swapped and running and driving again by Sunday afternoon. That's that would be my uh, my estimate. I'd say it's about a two and a half day job if you have everything. Now, what to keep in mind with that by what have everything is if you just buy one of these kits, you're not going to have everything you need to actually complete this job because the factory steering is the big one. That's this guy right here. This does not work with rack and pinion that you use on these Mustang 2 setups. Now, you can cut the shaft off and modify the end of it so that you can put one of the universals on it. I don't know if you can even see it at that angle, but you can put one of those, cut the shaft off and flat side it and put one of those universals on it and use this if you really want to. Um, I'm gonna do an aftermarket column just because it'll be a lot nicer overall and get rid of some of the fact that the column I have in the car doesn't work with my 700R4 without getting some modification stuff. It has to be modified anyway, so we're gonna put an aftermarket column in that will just work with my 700R4. And it'll be a nice upgrade because this column's kind of, it was a little bit loose anyways, and the factory steering wheel was kind of it had some age on it. So, the other things you're gonna need to complete this front end if you wanna do it, it if you want them, inner fenders are typically not part of the kit. Um, so you, if you wanna run inner fenders, then you'll wanna get those separate. One of the things that's typically included with the inner fenders is a bracket that mounts up here with the down bar. Um, and that what that bracket does is it supports your, it reinforces where the hood hinges mount. Without a that hood hinge reinforcement, then you're, you're gonna have problems. Um, basically, this part of the factory core support, uh, let's see if I can go right here. Not, it's not even the core support, but the factory front clip, you can see that there's an added layer of steel put in right here that's for supporting the hood hinges. Uh, so this is all beefed up right here to, to support the hood hinges because there's actually you know quite a bit of load on those. When the hood is up, the hinge is actually supporting and putting a lot of stress into this piece. So you do need something, the, the, the brackets that go on here, that they, I believe they mount, you wanna mount them behind the down bars, but then that would affect your shimming. So maybe they mount to the front of the down bar. I don't know, I don't have them. So um, I can't tell you for certain yet, but what I do know is they do mount with the down, at the top of the down bar 
to uh, help manage the load from the hood hinges. From what I've seen, those are included with the inner fender kits, um, but you can get them separate from an inner fender kit, just the brackets if you want those. Uh, then the other part that you'll need that's part of the inner fenders is the fender skins mount to the top of the factory front clip. You can see all these speed clips that are on here. Um, if you're going to run no inner fenders, you still need something to support your outer fender between the firewall and the core support. So they, there is a deal. I did see a deal from, I think it's Speedway that has them, which is just a rail that'll run from the core support back to where the down bar is and mount there and give you a rail to mount your fender skins on your outer fender if you want to run no inner fender. Or you can get the inner fenders and they'll have that support like that. Uh, what else? Brake system. The If you have a car like mine that was a factory drum brake car all the way around, it'll have a single pot master cylinder in it. Uh, if you've already upgraded, I don't, I, actually, I think I already took it off this car. Yeah, I did. Um, if you, that car, the red car was already upgraded to disc brakes and it had, I upgraded it to a dual pot master, which is for disc drum. And you can't run disc brakes with a drum brake setup. You'll have problems. So you have to replace your master cylinder which is a real good safe thing to do anyways because the single pot had a single circuit brake system that went from goes from the master cylinder to the first wheel and then from the first wheel it went to the next wheel and then it went to the next wheel and then it went to the last wheel which meant if you got a leak anywhere in your brake system you lost all your brakes all braking was gone um, if you got a leak. So changing, even if you stay four wheel drum, going to a dual pot master is a huge safety improvement for the car because then if you end up with a brake failure, you only lose 50% of your brakes instead of 100% of your brakes. Uh, definitely something you should consider, even if you're car you're not going to do a, a front end swap and you're just doing a stock front end and you're just trying to make it more streetable and more reliable that right there going to a dual pot master which you can get them in drum drum if you're going to stay four wheel drum which there's nothing necessarily wrong with that especially if you're not doing a high performance build there's nothing wrong with drums all the way around but this a single pot master is just asking for something to eventually go wrong and be a real ugly situation so you'll uh i i highly recommend that you look at doing a dual pot master and splitting your brake system into a front rear system it's just a whole lot safer uh, and then you can you can also run a proportioning valve so you can balance the braking it'll make the cars drive better there's just a whole lot of good that comes from make doing that conversion so, you know, take that with a grain of salt. But, and then I, that's really, that's really about it for what's still needed as far as parts. I, I figure, you know, steering column, brake master, some new brake line work, and inner fenders, structure, and the hood hinge brackets. And this front end's about complete, okay? Um, I am gonna do it a little bit slow. I'm not gonna rush it the rest of the way back together because like I said, I, I wanna clean up the firewall a little bit and do some, some preventative work on the firewall to make it last longer and stay in good shape. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the fenders. There's some work on the fenders up there that I gotta, gotta do to, to preserve them. I don't plan on doing a bunch of repair work or patch panel work or anything, but I do want to get 
the some of the bad spots get the rust out of it and do put a uh, a rust encapsulator that's what i think the uh the the hot ticket keyword is an encapsulator but put some of that stuff on the inside of them where there's some issues to just basically stop the rust from getting any worse i don't it's probably the best way to go but i don't want to change the look of them so i don't want to actually do any serious work on them or maybe i just want to be lazy and not do any serious work on them um i don't know you can take it for which whatever it is so we're we're getting there we're getting there uh it's just it's going to be a little bit slower going back together uh the other piece that we still have going that i got to decide what to do with is this little guy right here. This is the 350 that I took out of that car. And other than the fact that it was a continual problem with the with the carburetor, which I, I got some great suggestions recently of things to look at that might be contributing. One would be to check the intake manifold, the flatness, and make sure that it's good and flat and uh, I, it's something I'll look into. I, I don't think it's an issue, especially with run, having added a, uh, a composite uh, insulator spacer under there. That should take care of, if there was a minor imper imperfection in the flatness, that should have resolved it. Um, but we'll check that. And then uh, another suggestion that I got was that there's a possibility that I had too much timing in it. When I set that up, I, I set it up for 35 degrees total all in. This distributor is a mechanical advance only. There's no vacuum advance on it. So I, I don't remember off the top of my head what the swing was, but I think it's got a 20 degree mechanical swing in it, which means if it was at 35 all in, it was idling at you know, about 15 degrees of uh, advance and that might be a little high um, and that might be contributing to the heat situation a little too much advance at idle and resulting in, in the motor running a little bit hot um, so that's that's definitely a possibility uh, so i might try taking some a little bit of timing out of it and getting that to go and then uh, there's a few other things to to address on it um, the oil pan which i've mentioned multiple times that it's mangled but let me uh let me adjust this camera view there's a good look at how mangled it is yeah it got whacked pretty damn good i'm actually shocked that it uh it doesn't leak and it didn't crack anything especially right here along that line i don't know i don't know how it survived that uh that hit that it took without just totally mutil dumping oil everywhere but it still holds oil so that that was good but we'll have to uh address that and i'm gonna pull i want to get rid of that pan anyways just because it is one of the oh man i'm playing with the camera a lot um it's one of the notch pans for running with a factory front clip. And I don't have a need for that now on this car. So we're gonna get that off of there between being mangled and not being an ideal pan for the front end that's on there now. We'll get a, uh, a standard pan for it that eh, probably something that's a little extra capacity, I don't know, a seven quart pan, something like that. So that would be, you know, because a good amount of more oil in the pan is always a good thing as long as the pan's designed for it but that's that's where we're at with well that was a weird noise um that's where we're at with this i'm not when i when i pull the pan i'll know more of what's going on in the bottom end because i never had the bottom end of this motor open um, if everything looks really good we may just we may put this back in there with a fresh rear main on it and give it another go that's a possibility but the other thing that i've really been playing with is i have this motor right here which is 
currently residing in this front end that needs to come off of this car because this front end setup that actually goes is going to be going on to that car right there um this is a 67 no 66 327 um it's got the correct heads it's got the correct build on it it's a um i believe it's really close to being an l79 type motor it is not a true l79 uh, but everything about it is very similar to the l79 flat it, it's got flat tops not pop-ups uh, and it's a stock bore <coughs> excuse me um 60, 66 327 basically an l79 clone flat tops stock bore and it's just a good motor this motor when i had this car going before it ran good i mean there was nothing special about it the 600 holly on it it had a point a single points distributor on it yeah points i was still running points on it and it would wind up to 5500 6000 rpm and just rip this car would get out and just go it killed tires for days even with a 308 rear gear in it 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 was great um, it's just a great little motor it's got 461 camel hump heads on it uh, i don't know if they're 194s or 202s don't know which ones they are because um, i've never had these heads off this motor <laughs> funny story let me let me back up a little bit let me tell you the story of how i got this motor okay this is hey well it's quite the it was quite the adventure and it starts it actually starts with this motor this motor is also a 66 l79 base 327 uh, this motor started as a truck motor uh, i got it used as, basically as a core for a couple hundred bucks tore it down got rid of the truck heads got a set of 461 camel humps same thing that's on that motor and took it all to a an engine shop and had it redone i was like i want basically i wanted an l79 because that's what i wanted to run in that car at the time i wanted a 327 four speed setup right and the l79 is it's not the hottest package. It wasn't the, you know, the 11 to one build. Uh, I wanted right around, you know, nine and a half to one, a good, happy pump gas, probably good for like a 300 horse, which in a little Nova is plenty of power to have fun with. You're not gonna be killing it at the drag strip on that, I know, but 300 horsepower in a car that weighs 3000 pounds or less is a plenty to have a real good time with, right? So I had this motor built and was really excited about it. I, everything in it was fresh. Uh, well, the, can, the crankshaft wasn't. Uh, I think we reused the crankshaft and we reused the rods. And then the heads were completely redone fresh. Those ones have, that's got uh, 202, 160 valves in it. The, the cam is an old, is, was, well, was, an old is isky cam um a hydraulic flat tappet cam and it uh went with hyper eutectic i think they were hyper hyper eutectic flat tops i don't remember exactly which ones this is years this is like six years ago now seven years ago so it's been a while and fast forward i got it into the car right i got it in i got it in the car I was super happy about it. I completed the V8 swap because it had, what, that was a straight six car. Uh, it was a straight six, three speed car. And I went to a 327 four speed setup, which I was super excited about. It was a fun build, uh, stock front clip. I had already done disc brakes on it, got the motor in and just, it wouldn't run right. And I messed with it for a little bit, it wouldn't run right and I, I called up the, the uh, and it started, and it was smoking just a little bit out the tailpipe. Now, mind you, 
I didn't do the break-in. I had the machine shop that built the motor. I had them do the break-in on it right there in the shop on a run stand. Um, that way, you know, it was optimal conditions. The motor was broke, broken, the cam was broken. It was ready to go. Put it in the car, drive it. Um, the only thing that it was pro that it would need would be some drive time, uh, additional drive time. What is it? You know, you're supposed to do, you know, a few hundred miles, like 500 miles, give or take, on before your piston rings actually get fully seated to the bores. Um, other than that, I mean, it was it was ready to go, right? So I got it in the car, started driving it, and you know, and this, at first it had a little bit of little bit of smoke at startup off the tailpipe uh off off the exhaust and i didn't think a whole lot of it it was no big deal motor was running pretty stout was pretty happy and i i started driving it a little bit on the weekends over a course of three or four weekends putting some miles on it and driving it and driving it and it the smoke started getting worse and it started to run the r worse and get worse and get worse and I call up the machine shop, and I'm like, dude, guys, there's, there's got to be something wrong with it. And the old time we're running the machine shop, is, ah, it's fine. The ring's got to break in. It's supposed to do that. Everything's good. Keep driving it. Keep going. There's nothing wrong with it. You don't need to take it out. Don't drain that oil out of it yet. It's not done breaking in. Um, okay, fine. You, you've been doing this a long time. The guy had been, you know, building motors for, I don't know, 30, 40 years, right? That's, I, I, well, yeah, he'd been building motors. He told me, you know, it was like 30, 40 years. He'd done a lot of small block Chevys. And uh, I'm like, okay, okay, you, you said it, I'll do it. I drove the car again, like a week later, put another 50 miles on it, and it was running like dog. Well, I'm not even gonna pad that. It was running like dog shit, right? It was, and it was smoking worse than it ever had. It wasn't just at startup, it was just smoking. It was blowing oil. And I'm like, no, nah, there's something wrong, it's done. So I, I pulled the motor and I took it back to the machine shop with the oil that I drained out of it and went, here you go, here's the motor. Here's a, here's a jar of the oil I drained out of it. It's just, it looked like a stripper was dancing in that jar. There was that much glitter in there. It was not good. Um, and I told him, I was like, you know what? This, figure it out. Figure out what went wrong because there's something wrong with it, right? Long story short, don't know what went wrong with that motor. Here's the kicker. That car was supposed to be at my wedding. Now, when the motor went back to the machine shop, it was six weeks until my wedding. And a week later, I get a phone call from the machine shop and the motor is shot. He's like, yep, it's gone. Crank's wasted, it, the cam's wasted, the bores are shot, the rings are shot. It's a mess. You're gonna ha it's gonna have to start from scratch. Now, I won't get into how that evolved into the fact that I actually have this motor back and it's complete again. Long story short, I have this motor back and it's complete again but it had to be completely redone from scratch, find a whole bunch of new parts. And that was a problem because at this point, now we're five weeks until my wedding. My car, which is supposed not to be, not necessarily just at the wedding, but is a part of the wedding, has no motor. So Marketplace provided. That's the short story there. Jump on Marketplace and I start shopping hardcore, looking at what I can find for a small block, basically deciding that my budget's blown. I already spent all my budget on the car side of stuff because, you know, you know how the way, way when it comes to weddings, you, you can't play with the wedding budget, right? That's a big no-no. Even in a car family, you still don't screw the wedding budget. So I didn't have much money left to actually do anything with the car. That motor was shot. Didn't, wasn't gonna be able to get that done in time. And I'm on Marketplace going, man, all I need is a small block Chevy of any type that is dirt cheap and runs. It just has to run. Not even good, just run. And I come across this motor, another 66 327. 
the the guy I got it from, which I ended up being kind of friends with, he's kind of, he was a super cool guy, didn't know anything, didn't really know anything about it other than the what the heads were, because you can get to the casting number on the heads without pulling the motor apart, and the the deck number on the front and casting number of the block, it was, you could tell, it was a 66, 327 with 461 camel hump heads on it. Other than the valve covers being loose and the intake being loose, it wasn't opened up. It, he's, he told me, he's like, I don't know if it'll run. It looks like it should run. The history on it where that I know of, this guy got it from the history on it that he knew about the motor is that it had run in the past. It looked clean. It didn't look like it had issues. And, I, and he wanted 600 bucks. And I was like, you know what? That's about all I got left, but let's go for it. Then I, at least I'm gonna have the 327 four speed combo that I want. And we're gonna bank on that this motor has got some life in it. We can, that we'll be able to make it work. Threw an intake on it, slapped the top end together, or well, I had to redo the freeze plugs. Um, Flush, flushed all the water jackets, new freeze plugs, dropped an intake on it, you know, finished putting the rest of, you know, carburetor, distributors, wiring, threw an alternator on it, and threw my pulleys that I needed for it to fit in the car that I'd already got the setup for because I stripped all of that off of the first motor before I took it back to the machine shop. And what do you know, put it in there, hit the key, and it fires up. Not only does it fire up, it sounded damn good. And, well, I've still never opened that motor and it, before I started working on this car, man, it was running good. You know what? I will plug a clip right about now. Yeah, so as you just saw in that clip that I just plugged, it was running It was running good before I even started doing this. You just grab gears and you just go. And I was, in that clip, I wasn't even really hammering down on it. That was just a good squeeze and a nice casual roll through the gears. It was, it's a good motor. So, coming full circle here. Full circle. 327, that is a known good motor or 350 that I am yet to really have any confidence in, but has potential to be a good motor. Um, supposed to be a four bolt main block, which we'll find out when we take the pan off if it is. Um, it is an 010 casting and I was told it was a four bolt main by the person I got it from that put the pan on there. So I have a little bit of faith in, hopefully that they didn't just blow smoke about the four bolt main, but eh. We'll see, most of the 010s are four bolt main, but some, some aren't, so we'll find out. But that's where I'm at. I'm at, I'm at a dilemma. Do I put the, the unknown, the, the 350 that still hasn't proven itself back in the wagon, or do I put a 327 in there and just be happy about 327s? Because I love 327s, all right? 327s, I don't know why. I know that technically, a 350 with larger displacement, if done with comparatively equal parts to a 327, is going to make more power. There's no replacement for displacement. I don't argue that. But at the end of the day, there's just something about a 327. There really is. 327s are awesome. That's just all there is to it. 327s are awesome. Um, and technically, technically, if I do put the 327 in this car, it's a 327 four-speed. <laughs> Check that out. Now, it's not a manual four-speed. It's a 700R4, but that's a four-speed. So that would make this car a 327 four-speed. So, I don't know. If you think that I should run a... Let me know what you think. Is the 350 the better way to go? And I guess we need to know more about it, but that's okay. You can still voice your opinions. Or should I do the 327 and uh, go that route? Because, I mean, there's no doubt there, that 327 uh, will have, 
there's a few maintenance things I would like to do to it before I put it back in a car to run it. Uh, it needs a, a, a set of uh, valve seal, uh, stem seals, which is no big deal. They're just old, and so a, that wouldn't hurt anything. And a rear main probably wouldn't be a bad idea. It, it's had a, a super mild drip. It might be the pan gasket, but uh, that's no big deal. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I haven't been able to decide if, if I should do the 327 or the 350. And well, we have we have some time to decide, I guess. Because I uh, I don't know. You let me know. Go down in the comments and tell me 327 or 350. Um, I can tell you that the 350 is a stock bore, so it's not a 355. It's not overboard. It's not 30 over or any of that sort of stuff. It is a true. 350 virgin bore block. Um, I know that because of when I put those heads on there. It should be around 9.1, 9.2 to one compression. So there are similar compression ratio in the motors. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. You, you let me know, 327 or 350. And then if you have any suggestions on things that I should do or parts that I should use as I do this, you can also let me know in the comments down below. Uh, I know a lot of people are really big on the I did it columns, steering columns, but I, I don't exactly have, I'm not sure I wanna drop six, 700 bucks on just on a steering column. I know they're nice, but uh, I'm not sure that that's, I'm basically, as you can see, everything I've done on this car, I'm doing, um, by way of budget, hence a, uh, a used front end. So I'm thinking I'm gonna go with a, a little bit more cost friendly steering column, potentially at the risk of getting what I pay for, which is, you know, typically how it goes, you get what you pay for, you go cheap, you get cheap. But uh, we'll see, I gotta look into that a little bit more. And then uh, wiring harness, I already have a good idea of what I'm gonna do there. I don't plan on doing a painless setup that's made for these cars because it's a it's a high budget deal and I'm not afraid of wiring. It's especially on these older cars, there's not that many wires. So if you have a if you have a general idea of what you're doing, then you can take a generic um, 17 circuit or 21 circuit automotive harness and you can just lay it in and, and make it work. Uh, if you're doing a factory restoration type deal, that's where uh, painless kits come in real nice because they have all the right plugs that go to the right places. But this is not getting one of those types of restorations. This is getting, you know, your average Joe restoration in the shop, just making it go. So I'm not worried about perfection or flawless or wires being pre-cut to all the right length. The, uh, I, can, I can do a lot of that. And I, I kept all the, all the factory harness that I took out of it so that I can pull my plugs for, you know, things like my windshield wiper motor and my headlight plugs and my marker light plugs. I have all that. So um, running connections and stuff and my own wire sheathing and all that, since it's a aftermarket front clip, I'm gonna have to run the wiring different than how it's run by the factory anyway. So, uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna go generic on that and uh, make that work. Um, brakes. Uh, it's already got disc brakes on it. We're gonna use what's there. Uh, maybe clean them up a little bit. It looks like they got some flash rust on them, but eh, overall they look pretty decent. I haven't looked at the pads, but eh, we'll find out when we go to use them. And then, uh, yeah. So, I guess at the end of the day, the real question is. 350 or 327, you let me know what I should put in the car. And I, I'm even gonna set up a poll, 350 or 327, and by the time that I'm putting a motor in to keep in this car, that I'm gonna go with whatever I get in the comments. Whatever gets the most recommendation is what I'm gonna put in the car. So from now on, in every video until the final motor install, I'm gonna talk about a poll that I'm gonna figure out how to post somewhere uh, for 327 or 350. 
and I'm going to rely on YouTube to tell me which motor needs to go in this car. And that's about it. So, um, I appreciate you hanging out. So I don't have some exciting new progress on the car that we didn't do a whole lot of wrenching. It is Super Bowl Sunday, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go bounce inside the house and probably not watch the Super Bowl, but uh, eat Super Bowl foods because that's really the best part of the Super Bowl is the foods. And I really don't care about the game. Sorry if you're a football person. me, I, didn't, I don't mean to offend, but I mean, it's the 40 Winers and the Chiefs. Who cares? I, all right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For those of you that like the Super Bowl or like those teams, I'm sorry. Kind of. Okay. Uh, yeah. We will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Don't forget, go to – I I may have to put a correction on the screen with some wording that says to go somewhere else. But I believe if you go to the community tab on my YouTube page – Let's see, it's going to be, you know, one of the, if you're looking at the YouTube page, it's, you know, one of them tabby things you can click on. It's like videos, playlists, shorts, community. There's one that says community. I'm going to put a, at least at minimum, I'm going to put a post on there if I can't figure out how to get a poll. But I'm going to put a post on there at minimum that for 350 versus 327 for this call. So. Either comment on this video, that'll work. I can get the number, the, the count from there, or go find that post slash poll, whichever one it is, and and make your vote there for 327 versus 350. Ooh, I'm gonna do two polls, two. First one, 327 versus 350. The second one, carburetor or throttle body fuel injection. Because I've really been looking at that and some of those, considering what I want to use this car for, which is uh, road tripping, a throttle body fuel injection system might not be a bad way to go. I don't know, I'll think about it. There might be a poll for that. There will be something to do a poll on 327 versus 350. Might be a poll about carbureted versus throttle body fuel injection. Anyway, that's enough of me rambling about my BS for this week. I will uh, I will be working on the car next weekend or something else in the shop at minimum if I don't have parts to start working on this. I will We will be wrenching next weekend. I will have a plan. There will be something interesting to watch. Maybe. I don't know about interesting. There will be something. Um, but... I hope uh, hope everybody had a good week. I hope nobody's people are staying warm because it's cold and wet all over the U.S. right now. So I uh, hope you're staying warm and uh, keep working on those projects. It's winter, so it's the time to work on them. Even though it might be cold and wet, it's the time to work on your projects because before you know it, spring will be here and the clock will be ticking to uh, get the summer weather and the hot rods out on the road and the car shows and the swap meets and the this and then that and the race events so it's it's kind of it's sneaking up on us it really is so get get out there and get your projects going um i'm trying and i promise you we will drive this car somewhere at, that is further than 12 miles from our house this summer it's gonna happen gonna happen oh yeah and if you know of events going on this summer since we can't do power tour um let me know put those down in the comments too all right we will uh we'll see you guys on the next one